Welcome back. We now see that the Earth's climate is a complex, intricate system. Oceans, ice, air and land interacting together, powered by the sun's energy. And that complexity makes it hard to predict. But scientists can do it, and they're improving their models all the time. One way to do that is to look further back into the past. Like the pages in a diary, building up layers of a historical story. Many things on Earth have put down layers each year. Ocean corals, cave stalagmites, long-lived trees, tiny shelled sea creatures. They've faithfully been recording the conditions of our planet's past. And, if we read them, they can uncover the Earth's temperature at a given period of history. Over 50 years ago, in a hut in Antarctica, a French scientist, Claude Lorius, dropped a chunk of glacier ice into his whiskey. As he went to sip the golden liquid, he spotted air bubbling out of his hand-carved ice cube. And immediately, he wondered. As he drilled the ice out from deep down earlier that day, did it perhaps carry secrets from the past? As snowfall builds up each year, it forms layers as it is compressed, much like tree rings. By drilling deep down, researchers can reach back to snow that fell a very long time ago. Ice cores drilled from Greenland and Antarctica ice sheets can be kilometers long, and they reveal information stretching back up to 800,000 years. Claude was right. The air bubbling out of the ice had been trapped thousands of years ago and would hold clues to what the atmosphere was like when the ice around it locked it in. Thanks to ice drilling and the composition of the gases trapped inside, we can work out the temperatures of the past as far back as 800,000 years. As you can see, there are regular peaks and troughs in that temperature. Cycles that, although each unique, do show a similar pattern. A pattern that tells us of regular ice ages through Earth's past. Each cycle is roughly 100,000 years long, and the average temperature difference between the glacial periods, the cold ones, and the interglacial periods, the hot ones, is roughly five degrees. So how did the world look during these extreme periods? At the coldest point of the last glacial period about 20,000 years ago, with temperatures approximately 5 degrees less than today, an ice sheet covered most of what is now Canada, the northern United States, northern Europe and Asia. Above what is now New York City, the ice sheet would have been about one kilometre thick. It extended right out over northern Europe, with its southern boundary passing through Germany and Poland. The channel did not make much sense back then, since you could walk from Paris to London. Globally, the sea level was 120 meters below what it is today. In contrast, during the previous warm interglacial period about 120,000 years ago, there was substantially less ice in Greenland and Antarctica than at present and the hippopotamus could be found as far north as the rivers Rhine and Thames. What brought on these ice ages and what got Earth out of them again? Well, a big part of that is how the Earth moves around the sun. The shape of the Earth's orbit around the sun varies. It goes like this, round and round, but also a bit back and forth from more circular to more oval. Plus, the Earth's axis of rotation also varies, changing the amount of the sun's heat the poles receive. Both of these, the Earth's orbit and its axis of rotation, change following a pattern with a cycle of about 100,000 years. And they're the main cause of the climate pattern we saw. OK. So over the past 800,000 years, the planet experienced changes in temperature of around 5 degrees across 100,000 year cycles. Is this continuing today? Well, 
see for yourself. On this NASA video, red means higher than normal temperatures, blue lower than normal temperatures. And normal here is the global surface average temperature from 1951 to 1980. You can clearly see warming over the whole globe. Yes, there are some blue spots locally, but globally it is red. Earth has warmed more than one degree C since the late 19th century. That is one degree in 100 years, a much more rapid change than five degrees over thousands. This rapid, steep increase cannot be explained by those natural variations. Thank <laughs> you.